again, everybody. This is Lubov Pirkel from CFD Support. Uh, welcome to the webinar on turbo machinery design and analysis. In today's webinar, we would like to show you an easy way how to design a centrifugal fan from a scratch in CF Turbo and then how to simulate it and evaluate it in TCFD. The webinar is being recorded and its recording will be made available on our YouTube channel. I hope all the techniques works just fine now. And in case of any technical problems, feel free to contact us and we will gladly answer all your questions and comments. Okay, so please let me introduce the speakers of today's webinar. So this is me. My name is Luboš Pirkl. I am co-founder of CFD Support and my current position at CFD Support is telling the world what, what we do. I'm going to guide you through this, through this webinar today. Uh, I'm here in our Prague office with my colleague, Radek Matsa. Uh, hello, Radek. Hello, hello, Blue Bosch, and hello to everybody who is watching us. Uh, okay, so Radek, are you ready for the webinar? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, and finally, to, together with us on the line, there is Oliver Felde from CF Turbo in Dresden. Uh, hello, Oliver. Hello, Lubosch, and hello, everybody. The, the same question, how are you today and are you ready for the webinar? I'm fine and I'm ready, thank you. Uh, the, that's great, I will, I will only note that uh, Oliver is senior manager CAE at CF Turbo, and he is responsible for consultancy and software development, especially for the implementation of turbo machinery design theory and related algorithms in CF Turbo software. Uh, here's the schedule of today's webinar. So the webinar is going to take about one hour, depending on number of, of your questions and and comments. There will be four parts in this webinar. In the first part, there will be this general introduction. In the, in the second part, there will be, we, we can call it the design part or CF Turbo part. There will be a live example, example where Oliver is going to introduce CF Turbo a little bit, and then he will show us a live example of centrifugal fan design from a scratch in CF Turbo software with a final export of the designed model to the or for TCFD. In the next part, uh, let's call it the simulation part, there will be another live example where Radek is going to show you the TCFD simulation of that centrifugal fan exported by Oliver from CF Turbo in the previous part. And finally, there will be a Q&A session dedicated to your questions and our answers. So feel free to put your questions. Uh, all the questions will be answered. Some of them will be, will be picked and answered right in this webinar. The rest will be answered via email later after the webinar is finished. So this is quite important. So feel free to put your questions and it's, it's your time. Just, just take your chance and we will gladly answer all your, all your questions. Okay, so I think we can we can slowly start. So let's let's move to the design part of the webinar. I'm gonna hand over the presentation to Oliver. So Oliver, are you ready to tell us about CF Turbo? Yes, I'm ready. Yeah, okay. um, CF Turbo is a German-based company with, with uh, offices in in Dresden and Munich. We produce uh, our main uh, product that is a special cut software called CF Turbo. And that is a modern and powerful software tool for the design of, of turbo machinery and all its components. And we call it conceptual design because it starts with a design point rather than with uh, geometric uh, information. Right now we have something like a 200 active clients globally. And uh, uh, we offer CF Turbo, which can be used uh, with different models that, that have been implemented to design 
pumps, both uh, radial as well as axial, fans and blowers, again, radial and axial, compressors, turbines, and of course, uh, the other components which are necessary to complete the stage, which are stators and diffusers, plus the volutes. And with our software, we serve the following industries and amongst them there are aerospace, automotive, consumer products, energy, oil, gas, marine, mechanic, process engineering, and also the semiconductor industry, because there you find a lot of fans that, that are used to cool down, for instance, uh, CPUs and so on. Okay, what I want to show you today is uh, a live example uh, or a, a demo example of a design of a centrifugal uh, fan. And when you can see my desktop, I'm going to start with really from scratch with defining a an operating point. And, but first I have to choose which kind of machine I, um, want to design and of course it's going to be a, a ventilator, a fan. As I said before, the central entry into the software is the definition of a design point and that design point uh, should be the operating point in which the machine runs most of the time because what we do in CF Turbo is a best efficiency design for a particular operating point. So for the today's webinar, I have chosen that example where a comparably big centrifugal fan has to uh, transport 38,000 cubic meter per hour and had to produce a total pressure difference of uh, 0.265 bar and should run on, a, on a, almost 3,000 revolutions. Of course, the uh, fluid to be conveyed is air. And additionally, there are some inlet conditions that, that might be used for, for the CFD export at the end, but those are not necessary for the design because we consider the fluid at that low pressure as being uh, incompressible. Okay, once that is uh, defined, the next step is to add a new component to the project. And I'm going to start with the impeller because that's the one that is um, the central component of a, a single stage fan. And if I click on add the radial mixed flow impeller, then the very first design step I have to, to go through is the definition of the main dimensions. And there are a couple of tabs I have to go through or I can leave everything uh, as it is by default. So the first tab uh, holds a density value for the, for the solid material. Again, that this is not necessary for the aerodynamic design, but if we then later on put some thickness, for instance, onto the hub, we can use that density to uh, calculate the uh, the mass of the impeller, for instance. Okay, uh, at the first tab, I can tell whether I want to have an unshrouded or a shrouded um, uh, fan, whether I want to have splitter or not. Splitters are mostly used by uh, by compressors, but of course, one can can have them also with. Uh, fans. Sometimes uh, blower manufacturer use them too. The second tab holds a couple of parameters that can be used to get an estimate or a proposal by CF Turbo for the main dimensions. And the third tab just holds the actual uh, um, size of, of, of the main dimensions, the actual geometric parameters. So again, um, uh, these parameters are, uh, parameters are proposed by CF Turbo by just solving 1D balance equations like continuity equation or Euler equation of turbo machinery, 
plus some empirical correlation. And when it comes to that empirical correlation, some uh, parameters are needed and uh, they are given at this page. And because one needs to get the correct number of these parameters, there are uh, again functions given or yeah, correlations given that are implemented in CF Turbo from which one can get these uh, diameters. And very often they are given with respect to the specific speed. And here, for instance, we have the diameter coefficient, uh, which clearly comes from the uh, Cordier diagram. And with the specific speed of 30, which uh, what, what comes from the um, design point, uh, we propose a diameter co coefficient of, of roughly five. And this can be gained for all of the parameters that are uh, given here. And uh, with the help of that, using either the calculate button or the automatic mod modules, we get uh, these inlet, uh, uh, th these main dimensions, and those consist of the inlet diameter, the outlet width, and the um, outlet or the impeller diameter. And the automatic modus is used if I, yeah, if I check that checkbox automatic, then you can see clearly what happens if I change a, a parameter like the uh, dimensionless diam impeller diameter. Uh, and it clearly shows what happens in the automatic modus. Okay, I want to not go for that automatic modus. I, I just take these proposals and uh, get rid of this decimal pl places just by overwriting them just like that. Okay, once I'm happy, I press okay and I see in the, uh, what we call the meridional view, this strange looking uh, meridional contour. The next step uh, allows me to, to um, adjust this contour because here I can give him a certain actual extent. I can tell him what is the diameter of, of that uh, rounding at the shroud, where is the location of the leading edge, and I can even right click on, on, the, uh, on, the, on that uh, hub curve here and can tell him you should be a, a Bezier curve and uh, there should be a certain um, curvature and, and stuff like that. But I want to stick to the simple approach because very often these fans are made of just metal sheets. And that's why I use uh, the undo feature and go to the, the initial design. Um, and if I press now, okay, in our meridional view, uh, this this looks much more realistic, and we get also something uh, in our three D preview uh, in our three D view. Of course, only hop and shroud have been designed so far, and the the um, meridional location of the leading edge, but this can be clearly seen here in the uh, in that view. The next step is to define the blade angles at leading and trailing edge. And to this end, I use what we call the blade properties uh, design step. Here I can tell him how many um, number of blades I want to have and which kind of general uh, blade shade, shape I want to have. And as I said, uh, very often they are quite simple. Uh, I'm going to choose the circular 2D blade, which can be, which is 2D in actual direction. That's why actual is given here. And with with the uh, flow rate or the incidence definition at the leading edge and the uh, slip definition at the trailing edge, and together with the um, um, with a design point, CF Turbo is able to calculate uh, 
a proposal again for the blade angles at leading and trailing edge and those are given here and because it's a, a circular 2D uh, blade it tells you also because the leading edge position and the trailing edge position in the meridional uh, view is known it tells you also the blade radius which is connected to that set of uh, blade angles. Okay, I can from here go directly to the next design step, which is the, the blade uh, at the mean line design step. And we cannot see any active uh, unity or entity here in that left hand diagram because everything concerning that uh, that blade is already fixed because of the circular 2D um, blade shape. So I could go back and uh, I could change the blade shape to, for instance, free from 2D. And if I would now go again to the mean line uh, design step, now I could grab one master mean line and could change, for instance, the, the, the wrap angle or could change the um, uh, distribution of the blade angle just by changing the meridional description of the uh, of the blade. And then I, I would have some influence on the shape of that 3D uh, geometry. But because of the circular 2D uh, shape, that was not possible before. So again, I, I go back to it. Uh, switch to circular 2D and we have the same situation again. Always at the right hand side on in all the uh, design steps we have a lot of informational values that can be used to to uh, make a pre-validation before going into CFD uh, and amongst them there are for instance that 3D preview what you already see or a, a, a XY frontal view and there's even an, a very simple but fast uh, relative, relative velocity estimate, which can be used in either uh, in order to check uh, whether this estimated relative velocity would somehow meet the accurate criteria. So here, for instance, it, it, it touches a bit the accurate criteria, which I would say is fine. Uh, but if that would go very deep into that uh, restricted uh, area, then I would say we, we have to change the blade shape and then um, the wrap angle and so on. But this is not the case here. Okay, so if if I'm f happy with that design step, I will also see some uh, change in the in the 3D model. Now I have a a blade with a, a zero thickness. And therefore, the next design step is to add some thickness on it. In the previous design step, there was an initial thickness defined, which is which was something like six millimeters. Now uh, there are um, there is some sort of a polyline with some control points that can be changed, and one can change uh, by uh, changing those control points the thickness at hop and shroud uh, from leading to, to trailing edge. This is a very simple mode, which is the linear one, but one can also switch to a freeform mode where this thickness distribution now is uh, represented by a Bezier curve. One can do a rounding at leading and trailing edge, and one could even load a thickness di distribution from a built-in uh, profile manager which holds a couple of uh, predefined profiles, such as the NARCA four digits profile or the 65 series used in the leap line uh, method, point-based data and stuff like that. And of course, this can uh, be extended by, by the user. Yeah, because uh, again, I want to keep it simple and also because I want to uh, design a fan that can be manufactured just from uh, metal sheets. I stick again to the linear mode 
have the thickness constant from, from leading to trailing edge and press OK and then I have a certain thickness added to the mean surface. Now still the, the leading and trailing edge is sharp and one could uh, one would wish to 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 have there a smoother um, shape at, especially at the leading edge and to this end there is another uh, design step which is called the blade edge design step in which one can say that the leading edge for instance should be elliptic with a certain axis ratio and the trailing edge very often is trimmed um, with the impeller's diameter and one can see what that means if I zoom to the, the, the outlet and take the trimmed option off so it's it's just projected at one side and trimmed at the other side of the blade. Okay, so once I have done that, I'm I'm ready with my uh, initial design of the um, uh, impeller. And what I want also want to do is to to add a, a fans volute. And uh, to this end, I go to the interface and tell add a volute and the very first design step here again is the definition of the inlet diameter as well as of the inlet width. I keep that as proposed by CF Turbo in the meridional flu a few, few nothing has changed so far uh, apart from that kind of icon here and in, in the 3D view it's the same because what we have to define now is what should be the uh, the general um, shape of the volute. So what we have implemented here is uh, quite a big variety of different shapes you can have and they those can also change with the rep angle. The simplest one again which which I want to use for that uh, fan here is the rectangular one. That's why I'm going to leave this like that and the central design step of the volute is is uh, this uh, what we call the spiral development area in which the cross section of the um, volute are scaled with respect to the wrap angle and there are again some um, rules implemented such as the Flyler rule or the well-known and established Stepanov rule and you can change the, the swirl exponents for instance if you go for the Flyler rule but you can also do a geometric uh, based approach where you just uh, define for instance an, a final cross-section and then uh, yeah a cross-section distribution be between rep angle zero and rep, rep angle uh, 360. I stick to the Flyderer and if I look at this in the in my first initial design uh, it it's looking rather strange because the inlet width into into that uh, spiral is rather small and that's why or that gives me the opportunity to to say that uh, everything is parametric in CF Turbo. So at any time you you can go to any parameter, change it, and after clicking OK, you will get uh, the update of the three D geometry. So now it it very much looks different, and it would look like I would expect that. And what I have to add now is just a rectangular outlet diffuser with a certain length. So again, proposals made by CF Turbo. I'm going to change the length of that and uh, yeah, keep keep the and cross section as it is, or maybe I'm, yeah, I'll, I'm going to leave it. 
and here we are. And the design step to finish that is to add a, a cut water on it. And that's really the last design step. And I just go for the simple one, maybe change the angle at which I want to add the And here we are. Okay, uh, because everything is based on, on uh, turbo, turbo machinery design theory, on 1D balance equation and empirical data, one has to validate this design. And to this end, a couple of interfaces are implemented. And one of those is the one that we, we want to use today. So, And it's called the, the TCFD interface. Um, there are some things I have to do before I go into that um, interface. And one is given me here. It tells me that I need a, a gap between leading and trade, uh, be, be, between the, the, uh, the volute and the impeller. And to this end, I go back to, to it and make an extension and uh, maybe I, I just directly connected like that or okay also what i need to do is i need to tell that how the the 3d geometry is to be uh, generated by the built-in uh, um, cut kernel. And if I now save that just on the desktop, for instance, give him a fancy name like test, I can again try. Okay, now I only have some um, warnings which I can ignore because uh, here something in the names are just ex exchanged by some characters. And the only thing I have to do now is to define the um, STL ge uh, ge generation parameters and I make them all very coarse in order to save some time. And if I do so, I just can export the data and can now give the control file for the TCFD analysis plus the STL data that that will be produced um, to, Rad to Radek. And he's going to I can use that to, to show the validation of that design in, in TCFD. Okay, and saying that, I would like to to handle the presentation mode uh, back to Lubos. Okay, thank you, Oliver, for the turbo machinery design part. And now we we will move to the simulation part of of today's webinar. So, before we do that, please let me give a brief description of what is turbo machinery CFD or TCFD. So TCFD is a unique software developed by Czech company CFD Support. Uh, TCFD is a smart, easy to use and affordable CFD software. TCFD was designed for CFD simulations of all rotating machinery such as fans, pumps, compressors, turbines, turbochargers, hydro turbines, etc. It's designed both for radial and axial machines, both for compressible and incompressible fluid flows. The CFD numerical solver is based on open foam, and we believe the CFD is unique, at least for four reasons. The number one would be the CFD is always perpetual, which means our clients can keep the machine CFD forever and they can use it for unlimited number of users, jobs, or cores. And this means that with 
this CFD, our clients can scale their CFD simulations in a really big way. Number two would be TCFD is fully automated, which means all the workflow from the initial data to the final results, it can be run by a single click or a single command. And all the process is being done automatically. And for this reason, TCFD is extremely effective. Number three would be we, we deliver the extraordinary technical support, which we are proud of. We keep custom approach to every customer, to every issue. We never leave behind any of our clients' requests. We are very flexible in it. And also technical support is unlimited. So we support our clients uh, even in matters out of turbo machinery field, for example, in numerical mathematics, physics, CFD, IT, or even software engineering. And number four would be the real tutorial. tutorials are included in the CFD, so the, the user has no doubts about the best practice settings. There are included the real machines that really exist, and they are already preset. So the user can basically take them, use them, replace the, the geometry with his own data, and and uh, run the simulation. So the start of using turbo machine CFD is, is pretty smooth. There are many other benefits of using TCFD. I'm not, not going to go for all of them. I finish here with my last point that TCFD is developed in a way to support uh, the engineers and designers in their real value added activities. And the beauty of TCFD is that it's, it's the user who decides how deep to dive into CFD or not at all and uh, all the options remain open at the same time. Okay, so this is just, just the introduction to TCFD. And now it's time for the live example. Uh, so Radek, are you ready for your part of the presentation? Yeah, hello, yes, yes, I am ready. So can you give me the presentation? Yes, of course, yes. here you go. Okay, show my screen. Okay, thank you. So I hope you, you see my screen. Okay, okay, so at this point, I will directly start with using TCFD with the connection with CF Turbo. So I will start where the where Oliver ends or where Oliver ended. So I will open the project, uh, which Oliver has just created. So this test project. So I will go directly to the export part. And yes, and here I can export both components, impeller and volute. Here I can set the parameters of for the exporting STL. So basically the export contains the STL geometry for each component and the configuration file for, for TCFD. So here I can set, set the, the finest of triangularization of the surface. So usually it's the best to use the finest option to have really smooth and fine, fine geometry. So for this case, I set it here. And now when I would like to directly jump into TCFD after the export from CF Turbo, I can check the, here the open exported file and start exporting. So now it, it basically making the CF Turbo making the triangulization on our design, on our geometry. And in a few seconds, it will generate all necessary files to run the TCFD. And after export is ended, we can directly work with TCFD. So now the TCFD software is uh, it's opening, which I have here, yes. So it automatically opens Paraview, in which we have developed the graphical user interface. And as you can see, now we directly can can work with with the CF Turbo design of, of this centrifugal fan. Okay, so first of all, I will just show you how easy it is to run the simulation to validate your proposed design. So everything is preset. 
in these menus, I will, I will talk about it later on, you can modify the simulation. So basically now I, I will just change the number of processors because my, my computer has, has not 24 cores, so I will just use two for now. But in general, you can use any number you have. Then you click basically here in this pipeline browser, you click the setting, setting item. Then here, this icon of TCFD manager is highlighted. Then you click apply. Here you fill your directory in which the whole simulation will be stored. So for example, my first simulation and click apply to proof uh, or to confirm my, my new name. Then I click the right case. So all necessary files and directory structure is stored and created on uh, on the hard hard drive. And now, basically, I can run all, which runs the whole workflow of the CFD simulation. So first of all, it creates the computational mesh. Then it runs the simulation. At at the end, it creates the report, which contain all or results or evaluated values. And, and so on. And this is how we, this, this is all the process you need to do for, to, to run, to validate your design. So only a few clicks uh, from CF Turbo to, to, to get the results. Okay, so now I will go into more details. So I will go back. Let's say now I will start from the place where I stored my project. So here I have this webinar. I have prepared this exported geometry. And basically at the beginning, you have this STL files exported from CF Turbo and the configuration file. So now I can start by clicking on the configuration file. And now I will show you some setup into in, in more detail. Okay, so first of all, the, the, ge the geometry is loading. Some analysis is running background if, if the input, input geometry is okay for TCFD. And after it is loaded, you can nicely see here in the render view. Okay, so back to this menu. So what I can set here, so basically here I can set my setup file. So at any place I can save my current setup and use it, use it anytime later. Uh, of course, you need to set the machine type. So each machine type is specific to run with different solver and different condition and different parameters. So that, therefore we have preset some basic, basic turbo machinery designs or machines like fan compressors, pumps, turbines, hydro turbines or just stator parts, for example. The next part is the simulation part. Here you can set, for example, if you would like to simulate the steady state simulation or, or the transient. Of course, the transient is more time demanding and it takes, of course, more time to, to, to be simulated, but it is, uh, it is available for, for more detailed uh, analysis of your design. As I already said, the number of processor is unlimited, so you can choose choose any number of processor. We we perform some um, parallel performance analysis, and the scalability is quite high. Numerical order first or second. So I will I will I will set the first for for this for this uh, webinar example. Okay, the other part, for example, inside physics, you can you can decide if you would like to simulate as compressible or incompressible. So this, this centrifugal fan, which has, uh, which has quite, let's say, high compression number, let's say. So we need, we, we should use the compressible simulation with the Sutherland transport model, for example, with the given parameters. Inside the components here, basically, is the setup for the meshing part. So for each component, we set where to find the input STLs. But in general, you can use some external full end mesh in MSH format, for example. So if you have your own own mesh meshing software, so you can import your own mesh 
here. Then you basically denote what is the input fetches, what is the input boundaries, what type it has. It is quite straightforward. So hub is hub, wall is wall, inlet is out, inlet. Outlet interface stands for the connection between these two components, between the impeller one and the volute one. So each component should be connected by by selecting a proper type. Then the, the here are the refinement level using which you say how fine the mesh should be at the given position. You can enable the boundary layer to be created. And by the last column, you define which approach to use for communicating between the rotating part and, and the non-rotating part. So if the value is higher than zero, then the mixing plane approach is used. I think in CFX it's called for stage. And if you set it to zero, then the arbit AMI approach, or in other words, I, I think it is said the frozen rotor approach. So I will keep, for example, the mixing plane approach here. And here are some basic parameters uh, of, of the mesh. So the largest cell size of of, uh, uh, of your of your mesh internal point so which part of of your geometry would like to to mesh so basically inside or outside so for for turbo machinery or always inside your defined component and other parameters here is some some topology graph which is useful when you starting from scratch from your own geometry and you you are building the mesh from 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 scratch. Well, the speed lines basically defines how many points you would like to simulate. So each point, let's say, or we can say each point holds the different condition under which the, your machine is simulated. So here is the rotational speed minus is therefore uh, to follow the correct uh, correct uh, correct rotation. So it follows the right hand right hand rule yeah so if your time points the axis of rotation then your fingers shows how the wheel is rotating so in this way for this case maximum number of iteration for each point then the turbulence model for k omega sst in this case but we provide some other some other um, uh, turbulence models uh, the inlet condition so here i think is the total total pressure at the inlet and and the flow rate at the outlet i i think yes so here i preset more points just to see really the full efficiency map so i think the design point was something around 11 11 kilograms per per second oh sorry per where are the Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. This is the outlet one. Okay, so this is using some special boundary condition developed for for the for the fans. So to to automatically create the full efficiency map. Then uh, the initial condition. So some reasonable initial guess for the flow. Simulation controls include some advanced parameter which is connected to the solver. Post-processing here, you can say from which part of the geometry you would like to evaluate the efficiency. So from what will be the inlet, what will be the outlet, which parts of the geometry should be included into the torque evaluation and so on. Some automatic visualization can be defined here. So blade to blade views, I will show you later on in the, in the report some meridional averages you can define here and you can for the comparison purposes you can add some of your own graphs which which <clears throat> contain i don't know for for example a result from measurement or results from another simulation and so on some details about the meshing options so the automatic meshing if you don't input your own mesh is created by the snapx mesh and the scripting is enabled to um, to how to say to tailor to tailor some 
option or features which our customers has so we can directly create a script to follow our customers needs yeah so basically almost anything can be can be incorporated incorporated into the simulation using the scripting options okay so at the end um, if we are uh, fine with our setup so we can let's say click on apply what i didn't mention is this check setup so you can click here and it will tell you if every parameter makes sense what you have said if everything is consistent with other parameters so if yes the case check uh, or this button check setup button will tell you if the case is preset okay or not and and what is wrong for example okay everything is okay so i can click on settings you can then go for this tcfd manager i can click on apply write the case uh, the, so yes yeah, second simulation let's say right case and now i can run the simulation by one click or i have two options first to investigate the, the mesh so i can build the mesh component by component or mesh the whole geometry so i can do it by this so for example i for now i will click just to 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 see how the volume will be meshed and just just to to jump in time i have prepared and this is the simulation yeah here so in this where is my mesh mesh down here so now i'm at the point where the mesh mesh is generated so anytime i can visualize each part of the of the uh, of my design okay so i can click here into the surrender view i can just visualize the mesh yes and here you can investigate how the mesh look likes how the mesh looks like and i can add for example the rotor part and yeah, yeah investigate if the mesh looks okay i can perform anything what you want for example some slices through your geometry and so on just to see how the mesh looks like look look looks like inside okay and when i i am satisfied with the mesh i can simply click run run calculation and the simulation will begin so always you are informed about the state of the simulation so i will jump into my yeah this is the simulation on the i run a few few minutes before the this webinar starts so now the fourth point is simulated yeah how many iteration is already computed and what is the overall number of iteration what uh, how long does it take to finish the simulation and so on anytime i can click to the at the light report button on the light report button to see the current state of the simulation yeah so you can anytime create this light report to see the current state of your simulation if the residuals are okay so if if the simulation runs as, as you expected so you can you can check it here and at the end of the simulation if you, you should uh, click on the full report and the full full report generate generates the report which contains all information with all images which are available only at the end of the whole simulation set so all graphs of the whole point which you have set for the simulation and so on and so on okay so you can see here yeah in this in this part in this window you can see what is happening you can see that the plot of of all quantities are now generating yeah like torque flow rates etc and at the end the the report uh, will appear here okay so just to finish the simulation so here i have uh, yeah these computed cases which i've run before the simulation so this is how how the case look, looks like and the report the final report is stored here so you can anytime open it with your favorite 
Fravery browser, and this is what you get. So just the view of your design, just to see at the first time what, what you are watching, then the basic simulation statistics like the setup of your machine, the mesh sizes, the parameters Y+, plus, which is connected to the turbulence model, if, if it is in, in the appropriate range, how long does it take to simulate this, this, this design and other stuff. So first, first bunch of uh, information are connected to the fun characteristic. So this is a special variables um, defined for fans. So the flow, um, let's say the compression number with respect to the flow number. So you can see nice graphs and also the values here. Of course, the efficiency. So efficiency for each flow rate. So we can see that the best efficiency point is something, say 11.5 kilograms per second, and it's up to 86, 86%. You can see the convergence of the efficiency. So you can check if there are not big oscillation, let's say, so you can you can see how the simulation runs. Uh, and other parameters like torque, axial force, total pressure difference, total pressure ratio, total pressure per interfaces, and many others. The report is also interactive, so you can see, for example, what is happening between the wheel and the spiral with the total pressure with respect to the given flow rate. So you can really go through and analyze analyze your geometry. Okay, just to finish, at the end of the simulation, you can open, for example, I can go here, you can directly open the case and in, uh, and make your own visualization. So simply, if you click this case.foam, then the Paraview with the loaded, loaded geometry and loaded results will appear here. So you can apply and make every every modification or every every apply every filters which Paraview provides, like clips, slices, uh, glyph. Glyph visualization, streamlines, and so on. Moreover, we have developed our own filters into Paraview, some uh, which is the meridional average and the uh, and the turbo unwrap filter. So this one, which I have prepared in advance, is the is this um, meridional average. So you can you can follow, for example, the total pressure drop along along the along the wheel. Moreover, you can unwrap the wheel into the cubical shape, and then you can make you can make nice slices between the hub and shroud. So this is basically two two filters connected together. First one is the unwrap on the for the hub, shroud, and the blades, on which I have visualized the pressure, total pressure contours, as you can see here. And moreover, I make a slice on which I have visualized the relative relative velocities with the streamlines. So for example, for the given point, you can see if your, uh, how the flow pattern looks like. So no, here you can see that, for example, this point, for this point, there is quite big recirculation at the suction side of, the, of your design and Using this information, you can, for example, make some modification in CF Turbo design and 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 go for for better design, for example. Okay, so I think my time is almost up. So I I need to, or I unfortunately I have to, <laughs> I have to uh, hand back the presentation to Lubosh. So Lubosh, can I give you back the presentation? Are you online? <laughs> uh, yes. yes. Okay. Okay. So I'm giving the presentation back to Lubosh. Yes, absolutely. So thank you, Radek, for your part of the of the webinar. Uh, and now we can we can move to the latest part of the webinar, which is the Q&A session. So please come up with your questions if you have one or some, and we will answer a few of them 
and of course all, all the questions will be answered so 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 if we if if we can't make all of them we can we can answer your questions via email later after this webinar is finished okay so let's let's have a look what we have and please please come up with your questions so what we have here let's take a look so um, uh, yes I can see this yep so Oliver can you can you see any question you you want you would like to answer Yes, there was, for instance, the question about some comparisons we have made uh, with other design tools. And uh, I can only say that <laughs> this should not be done by a design tool producer because he always will will <laughs> speak maybe better for himself than for the others. So, yeah, please understand that we have not done that and it's, it would also not be good if, if we would do that. So that's one thing, and the other thing is uh, the the, the uh, uh, Mr. Brian Bean already left the webinar. Anyway, he asked also uh, how uh, the user is guided to a, a high efficiency um, design in CF Turbo, and the question is uh, the the answer is just uh, as I said before. We use the latest turbo machinery design theory. We use a lot of empirical knowledge that is publicly available and that has been uh, uh, developed by our own and that we ship with the software. And all these is used to, to really uh, give good initial designs and uh, a good parameterization initially, just in order to get the best efficiency um, what you can get. So that's what I just can tell in general about that question. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, Oliver, can you can you see any any other question you you would like to answer right now uh, to the uh, to the audience? Well, there is. Okay. Can we import coordinates of turbine plate profiles in the uh, in the CFD software. Yes, that is possible. At any time, in any design step, you can uh, load in any data which which somehow can be transformed transformed into ASCII data. And they can be used either as reference or they can also be used in order to fit uh, Bezier control points in order to get a real good uh, representation of these reference data. So that was Aniruda Jane's uh, question. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you, Oliver, for for answering these questions. Uh, yeah. What else we have? Uh, that there is a question on uh, whether TCFD can uh, simulate uh, ship hulls with or without uh, rotating propellers from Mr. Alexander Ursulov. Uh, so, so I could, we can say yes. Uh, we have we have extended uh, TCFD by by in the latest version. We have we have added this this uh, simulations of of uh, let's say open propellers in in an open space. So in TCFD now you can you can simulate also for example wind turbines uh, as well as as Hull propellers. So it's this. I can uh, yes. I can I can also give uh, an answer on on a question on turbulence models in uh, in TCFD uh, to Mr. Sharma because yes. So uh, basically in TCFD you can use all the turbulence models. Uh, who are or which are available for standard open foam uh, by default we we recommend using uh, uh, k omega sst model that's that's what we uh, recommend by by default and yeah the as you know or or as you can learn later uh, in open foam there is there is quite quite a lot of turbulence models uh, to available, so 
it's a matter of taste and it, also a little experience of of individual users uh, okay i think i think we are we are slightly over the time so i think i think it's it's a time to conclude now so as i mentioned all, all the answers all, all the questions will be answered uh, later via email so don't worry about it but now it now it's time to conclude so i think this is this is it from us uh, it's time to finish so feel free to contact us i'm sure you know very well how to do that uh, the questions about CF Turbo are to be sent to CF Turbo company. The questions about TCFD are to be sent to CFD support. We will gladly support you in your projects. So feel free to contact us. It's our job and also a pleasure. And yeah, so any, anything more to say, Oliver? Uh, the only thing I would say is that I thank all of the audience to take the time and and uh, join the webinar thank you and hope that we get in touch somehow okay thank you uh, radek would you would you say anything more well basically i will say the same so thank you very much for watching us and if you have any question or any comments or if you would like to uh, discuss something so do not hesitate to contact us Contact us at, C at CFD support or con contact Oliver at CF Turbo. And yeah, have a nice rest of the day. Bye. Bye bye. Uh, okay, all right then. So we leave you with that. So thank you for your attention. We are looking forward to collaborating with you. Stay tuned and bye bye for now. <laughs>